When we think of PC gaming, I'm sure two companies come to your mind immediately. Nvidia and AMD, formerly known as ATI. But once upon a time, there were more than just these two giants competing for your money. Before 3D graphics started becoming mainstream with consumer PCs, companies like Trident, ATI, Tsang Labs, S3, and Matrox, Matrox? Matrox? Someone's gonna hate on me for saying it however I say it. We're all competing with each other in the 2D graphics accelerator market. Unfortunately though, 3D graphics quickly started to become a thing with consumer PCs, and these manufacturers were struggling to keep up with the likes of 3DFX and the rapidly emerging Nvidia. But by 2003, only four companies were left standing. ATI, Nvidia, Matrox, and S3. Matrox, who were struggling to keep up with the competition by this point, were basically out of the GPU market now. The Parhelia, which would have released about a year prior, was a commendable card, but not enough to keep up with the likes of the 9700 Pro. S3, on the other hand, were about to merge with Via for one last hurrah at keeping their foot into the GPU market, but given that you don't hear about S3 anymore, I'm sure you can imagine how well that went. And while all this drama was happening, one company seemingly emerged out of nowhere with big hopes of becoming the next big thing in graphics technology history. XGI, sometimes known as Extreme Graphics Innovation, or by its Chinese name, Po Chen Ke Ji, sorry if I mispronounced that, I probably did, was a Taiwanese company founded in 2003 and led by Chris Lin. The company was actually a spin-off of the graphics division from SIS and the graphics assets of Trident. XGI would make their debut into the graphics card market with the Volari V8 Duo, a dual graphics chip on a single PCB solution. It was quite a bold release, but as people quickly found out, the drivers were really not so good, and thus the card was never really able to perform as optimally as it perhaps could have. In the end, the V8 Duo was a total flop, because it not only costed about as much as the 9800 Pro or 5900 Ultra, it could not even keep up with those cards to begin with. However, XGI would push through this rough introduction, and they would start to roll out more budget-oriented graphics cards, and in one case even gaining praise for their notable superior performance over the competition. Unfortunately though, XGI, just like all the others, would not be able to keep up with Nvidia and ATI for the long run, and by 2006, XGI pursued other markets instead to try and keep afloat. But by 2010, SIS stepped back in and they essentially disbanded XGI. Due to their foreign background, short lifespan, and overall lack of popularity, not much is really known about XGI, and finding an XGI graphics card of any kind is kind of like winning the lottery. Although, your reward is more like a steaming pilot. Whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. No, 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 no more, no more. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. Okay, how about before I finish that sentence, we actually give XGI a chance. Let's see just how bad it was. Sadly, I don't have a V8 Duo here with me to share with you guys today. Though if you're curious, there are videos out there of this thick girl breaking a sweat in some games. But you know what I do happen to have though? The V8 Duo's less sexy but still very sweet and soft-spoken little sister, the Volari V8. The Volari V8 uses the XG40 core, has 4 pixel shaders, 2 vertex shaders, 8 TMUs, and 4 ROPs. The core is clocked at 300MHz and the memory is clocked in at 201MHz on a 128-bit bus. This particular V8 uses 256MB of DDR memory, but allegedly the card could have been fitted with faster DDR2 RAM, but I don't even really know if this ever actually came to be. So in terms of competition, despite being marketed as a higher-end offering from XGI, after looking around and reading reviews and even doing a little bit of my own research, it seems that the card is best compared against a GeForce FX 5700LE 128-bit and a Radeon 9600. Hardly high-end. Across all three GPUs, the memory clocks are about the same. The core clocks are a little bit different, but again, you can't really compare apples to apples there. And more importantly, the XGI actually has eight TMUs, so that's double the TMUs of the 5700 LE and the 9600. So interesting to see if that will help it at all, or if it will kind of just be pointless. Let's find out in the benchmarks. Or so I had hoped to show you until this started happening not long after my testing. Uh, this is not good. <laughs> uh, that's rough. Yes, unfortunately, the Volari V8's 
Ram suddenly decided it was going to go bad, although it doesn't usually decide to suddenly do that. It was probably already on its way out and it finally gave up after about 20-ish minutes of testing. I was laughing at first, as you heard, because I thought, okay, well, it's just TSOP RAM. I can probably replace it. And as luck would have it, I actually had two MX4000s that I wasn't using. They, they worked fine, but I'm not gonna use them, they're garbage. And I harvested the RAM chips from them to replace on the Velari, but for whatever reason, this actually made it worse. It was now artifacting even in the BIOS and stuff. So I really don't know what I did wrong. Maybe not all the contact legs on the TSOP RAM are making good contact with the PCB. I did my best, but it's actually pretty hard, harder than I thought to solder that. Either way, our journey with the V8 kind of ends here. I'm kind of really upset about this, but unfortunately that's just kind of how it is when it comes to old technology. I do have three benchmark figures I can show you, so we do have something to show, but yeah, I am pretty upset that this thing just decided it wasn't going to work anymore. So anyways, let's take a look at the three benchmark figures I have before we wrap things up here. Starting things off with 3D Mark 2001. This is a DirectX 8 test suite and the Velari V8 is already quite behind its peers. So that's not a good start for it. Now, interestingly enough, the 9600 got the win here and I always thought that these cards were a little bit lacking in DX8 performance compared to the FX cards, but apparently this is not always the case. Up next is 3D Mark 03, and unfortunately, this is the only DX9 test I got to run on the Velari V8 before it died. The Velari V8 was a DX9 card. I don't believe it was fully featured, I believe it was mostly featured, but either way, it was still a DX9 card. Uh, as you can see here, it's actually only about 200 points behind the 5700 LE, which is kind of interesting. It's absolutely no one's surprised. The 9600 mopped the floor with both of these cards. But it's at about this point that I started to notice something with the Velari V8 as well. The image quality just felt off. Lastly is the UT2003 benchmarking tool. The 5700 LE and the Velari V8 were actually kind of close again with about 10 FPS difference. However, this did mean that for the V8 in the bot match, it would fall under 60 FPS. Interestingly enough, the 9600 came out on top. And also one other thing to note, the Velari V8 for some reason could not render the water texture in the first flyby test on DM Antilus. Not sure why. So in conclusion, what can we say about the Velari V8 and XGI as a whole? Well, in the case of the Velari V8, it's kind of a sad, pathetic card. It was marketed as XGI's sort of higher performance offering, and yet when compared against the barely entry level for, at least for gaming options from its competitors, it could not keep up at all. Like, it, it was just kind of sad. It was a little bit close with the 5700 LE from our very limited tests, but even then it still couldn't keep up with that. Unlike the V8 Duke, Duo though, Velari was being very conservative with the price on this card, so even though it was not doing too well against its competition, it was costing about the same or even less. I should also note that I tried to give this card the best possible chance by putting it on an AMD Opteron 180 with 2 gigs of DDR400 RAM and dual channel, and the latest and last, as I understand it, XGI reactor drivers. So this card definitely deserves its title of a steaming pile of shameful technology. I do have to give credit to XGI. GI for trying though. You have to admit it's very bold to come out of nowhere when two big bullies were really starting to dominate the scene of 3D graphics. Unfortunately, XGI kind of relied on marketing more than anything, and when it comes to marketing, you can very quickly start to see through the lines and, and see something for what it actually is. And unfortunately, the XGI Velari cards were not that good. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.